Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful day. Um, I just want to say a special thank you to the Jesse Lee family for um, scooping us our sidewalks over this week with the snow that we had, and also to Joel Whaling for helping to clear our parking lot. And uh, we really appreciate having them provide that service for us. Uh, I have a couple other announcements, um, additions to our prayer list today. If you would be in prayer for Jerry McCarthy, who was injured, and also to the family of Paulette Zimmerman, who passed away unexpectedly uh, just a few days ago. And so if you would be in prayer for them as well. Are there other prayer concerns that you want to share today? Okay. Any other announcements that you want to share today? Or you better thank Jason for the door. She wasn't supposed to. She wasn't supposed to? No. I blew it, didn't I? <laughs> All right, Jason, Jason put in a door for us um, last week, too, so we appreciate that as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. It's her fault. I know. <laughs> Um, also, thank you to Dalen because he was helping us with um, getting our internet figured out and our TV downstairs worked out. So um, thank you to him as well for helping take care of that. And um, last week you weren't here, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Brockhoff, but we had a nice big um, celebration and thank you and uh, this encouragement for your wedding celebration that you had um, 64 years you were celebrating and also um, Louise's birthday, right? Yes, good. So congratulations to you all on your 64th anniversary again. Um, okay, so then I have an announcement about um, baptism. And if Jason would, there we go. Um, yesterday, we had a little mobile baptism unit go out to um, Elkhorn, Nebraska. Uh, Jason and I helped um, Justin and Haley Wooster baptize their child, Charles Thomas. This is a great grandson to Keith and Mary Jane. And so we welcome him and the family into the family of God. And so uh, we also have a nice picture of the four generations there with Keith and Mary Jane holding baby Charlie and Gail and his daughter Haley. So it was a nice celebration and um, we were thankful to be able to spend a little time with them uh, after, after the baptism. So um, they wanted me to share with you their love and their wishes for all of you and um, just kind of just an uncertain time. Mary's going to be staying at Barb's house. Um, she is now on hospice. And so um, we're going to be thankful for every day that we have with her. And Keith is now over at Elmcrest. And um, I don't know what the future holds there as far as him staying there or what, what they're going to do there. But anyway, that's, that's the arrangement that they have for now. And so uh, you could also be in prayer for this family as well. All right. Then this Wednesday, we're having our Ash Wednesday service. That will be a community-wide service. We're inviting both Presbyterian and the Methodist churches over uh, for a 7 o'clock worship service with Holy Communion and the imposition of ashes. And so we encourage all of you to come back on Wednesday night for that worship service as we embark on our Lenten journey. And uh, please be sure to uh, invite a friend if you wish. The following... Uh, Wednesday evenings will be here at the church as well and we're going to keep with a similar schedule that we had last year with um, like a light, light dinner or light supper uh, I believe starting at 545 and so um, just be aware that uh, we'll be giving you some more information about that and uh, having probably some sign ups for people to help out with bringing different items for uh, that light dinner. So those are my announcements for today. And um, if there aren't any others, we'll proceed. Okay. Well, if you will then, please stand for our confession and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Make us to know your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. Lead us in your truth, and teach us, for you are the God of our salvation, for whom we wait. If we say we have fellowship with God while we walk in darkness, we lie, and we do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out our transgressions, wash us thoroughly from our iniquity, and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and uphold us with a willing spirit. Amen. Let it be known to you that through Jesus Christ the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. He commanded us to preach and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives the forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen. We'll begin our singing with Beautiful Savior, and you may be seated. Sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearance. 
And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain, in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. Please read responsibly Psalm 2. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. But he announced the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them like an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow before him. Lest he be angry, and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. The second reading today comes from 2 Peter chapter 1. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice mourn from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain, and we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Here in the readings for today. Our gospel today comes from Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be unto Christ. Amen. <clears throat> I don't know if you can read this underneath here. It says, this is a picture of Mount Tabor, which is the traditional site of Jesus' transfiguration. 
And this photo actually was taken sometime between 1890 and 1900. So there is an absence, uh, an abscess, excuse me, I cannot talk, um, an absence of other buildings in the foreground. So you know that it's an older picture and probably fairly similar to what it might have looked like in Jesus' own time. And so, um, I thought that was interesting to share. And incidentally, the other pictures that I have that show kind of this sort of similar background are also um, scenes from that mountain. I was just curious today, do you all know what an after image is? Does anybody know what an after image is? Okay. Well, if you don't, I'm going to ask Jason to turn to the next slide and we'll give you a little example. Have you ever seen this before? Maybe, maybe not, okay. Well, there's an interesting thing that happens if you stare at this picture for 20, 25 seconds or so. But not just the picture, you have to stare, I don't know if you can see it, but there's four dots on uh, what looks like in between two hearts. So if you stare at this for uh, 20, 25 seconds, an interesting thing will happen. Are you game to try it? <laughs> okay, I will set my time clock here for just a few seconds, and then I'll give you some instructions, and you can see what happens. Oh, shoot. Here we go. Okay, ready? You have got your eyes locked on those four dots? Okay, start. Don't take your eyes off the four dots, and don't look around the rest of the picture. Just focus in on those dots and nothing else. Five, four, three, two, one. Now close your eyes and look behind your eyelids. What do you see? You see a picture of Jesus, don't you? Isn't that interesting? That's called an after image. And there's tons of these on the internet that you can find. Um, some with various different colors and um, different, um, I guess, pictures that are some more weird than others. But it's an interesting phenomenon that happens when we focus in on a really bright space. Uh, the negative space will then turn into uh, different colors. And it happens just because of uh, the rods and the cones in our in our eyes, and so um, I thought this was an interesting interesting picture because something else happens to our vision when we look at a bright light, say um, say the sun. If you go outside and and you happen to look at the sun accidentally, you'll see that kind of flash of the sun. Or if you were um, taking pictures with your family, maybe wedding photos or uh, baptism photos or whatever it might be. A lot of people taking pictures with a flash camera, not so much anymore, but you'll see those flashes for a while and you, your eyes will just get tired of seeing those things, seeing those bright lights. Well, one pastor, Pastor Jim Somerville, says he thinks that when God gave this vision of the transfiguration, he theorized that Perhaps that moment was God burning the image of Jesus permanently into the eyes of the disciples. And he thinks that's because uh, Jesus knew what was coming in that moment. He knew there would be a day in the not too distant future that they would stand looking at Jesus, not transfigured, but hanging on a cross stripped of his clothes and his face not shining like the sun but drained of all color and there would be someone on either side of him also not moses and elijah but the two thieves who were crucified with him and a cloud would descend on that scene too but the only voice would be the voice of jesus crying out my god my god why have you forsaken me this theory is that God knew that day was coming, and so he burned this image onto the retinas of the disciples permanently 
so that when they closed their eyes against the horror of the crucifixion, all they would see is the shining face of Jesus. It's a good theory. Of course, we may never know completely why Jesus took Peter and James and John to the mountain to share this moment in history, but it certainly had given them a brief glimpse of God's power and glory. And that, in turn, assured them that Jesus was indeed the Messiah and that they should listen to him. As if there were really any doubt before, this moment would be one to solidify it. When we hear this word given by God, it is a reminder for us also to listen to him and to trust that God's word is true. From all the law to the prophets and through the New Testament, God's word is true. And we are encouraged in our faith to believe in Jesus and his work for us on the cross. We hear this word spoken in our ears, and we can join Peter and James and John on the mountain awaiting this glorious return of Jesus. The after image of Jesus is also a before image. It is an everlasting image of Jesus that has been seared into our hearts on the day of our baptisms. We become his sons and daughters, made in his image to reflect his radiant love and light into our dark world of sin and death. Today is a day for us to celebrate together in anticipation of being forever in the presence of God in the fullness of his glory. It is also a day to celebrate both the past and the present and the future glory of Jesus. From his creation to his incarnation, his transfiguration, his crucifixion, and his resurrection and ascension. These are all moments where God's glory is revealed and Jesus has been known as the Son of God. As we celebrate and worship this day, this transfiguration of Jesus our Lord, this time of looking at his life and this moment of glory can strengthen us and encourage us in our faith. A lot of us in the last week or two have had difficult days, difficult news that we've endured, um, people that we know that have suffered difficult things. Um, news that our friend Mary Jane is uh, going on hospice and probably won't be long for this world. You know, um, such a long cherished member of our community and such a dear, dear friend to so many. <clears throat> It's hard to imagine um, our lives without dear people like her in our lives. And so these things can cause us to grieve and to worry and to fear and just to focus in on negative things. But the story of Jesus and his light and his love and his truth, I think, gives us a reminder to continue our hope and our faith in Christ our Savior. And we can encourage and support one another through all these difficult things that we face on a daily basis. And moments like these, like Jesus on the mountaintop, or yourself ever having a spiritual high, um, these things help to kind of fuel us when we need to persevere through dark times. And when we feel maybe God isn't so easy to find. These can help us appreciate the gift that God gives us in Christ Jesus. That through him, we belong to a good and gracious God who loves us beyond measure. And provides for us through his wonderful gifts, the sacraments, 
the baptism, the Holy Communion, these things he gives us to nourish us and sustain us in our faith, along with moments like the Transfiguration. And so um, my, my hope for you today is that you will be encouraged and supported and strengthened as you ponder on this beautiful, glorious time of Jesus shining his radiant light on his people. That is which for us just a foretaste of the glory that we will see with him and all of our loved ones who have faith in Christ when we all join together in that great holy reunion when Christ comes again to bring us all home to him. And so may that be a source of light and hope for you all in these difficult and dark days. Amen. We're going to sing the song, Tis Good Lord to Be Here, and this is a view, of, this picture here is a view from Mount Tabor looking out over the valley. Will serve your will and bring glory to your name. 
Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Have mercy, gracious Lord, upon all those who are ill or suffering in body, mind, or spirit. Bring them wholeness and healing through the miracles of modern medicine and the men and women who have chosen it as their life's vocation. We pray especially for those on our prayer list, for Tracy Shreves, Joni Eggers, Brian Castor, Michelle Jacobson, Landon Johnson, Rachel Knopp, Jerry McCarthy, Mark Jensen, Julie Jensen, Keith Peterson, Mary Jane Peterson, Don Turk, Bob Toms, and Catherine Toms, Madison, Polly, Peron, Dan, Jeanette. May we serve as your comforting presence with them through our visits, our phone calls, and written greetings. Lord, in your mercy. Make us eager to receive your word in scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice in the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered up even the unlikely as your people. With our forebears in faith and all who have hoped in you, Teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Help us, Lord, to lift up the families of Sonny Weedy and Paulette Zimmerman and Mr. Kwan. Give their families comfort and peace and hope. We bring to you, O Lord, all our needs and all our desires and all our hopes and fears, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified and risen. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. And now just a moment of thanksgiving for offerings received today. Our offering uh, basket is there in the entrance of our sanctuary. If you'd like to leave a gift for the ministry and mission of our church, we thank you for doing that. And we also thank those who give um, through electronic means, those who give online, our website at unitedlutheranshelby.org. So we thank you for all gifts. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for your tender mercies and for all that you have so faithfully provided for us. May our gifts be a sign of our love toward you and our desire to do your holy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing that we should at all times and places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sharing our life lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, <clears throat> gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom <clears throat> come, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ broken.
broken for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All are welcome to this table of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Please come. <coughs> The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have fed and refreshed us with this holy sacrament. Strengthen us in faith, faith and fervent love, love toward one, one another through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord, whose body and blood we have humbly received. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Lord, Dismiss Us With Your Blessing.
his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a great week.